Hello, welcome back to the show. I'm so excited you're here. Did you miss us? Cause we missed you. And you know we have another amazing episode on the floor for you today. It's State of the Youth. We have guests, we have one year. Oh, I don't wanna to spoil too much. So sit back, relax, and let's get into the show. Here we go. God made me fresh. God made me fresh. Nine three one six one five. Yeah. Lil' Dilly from the bottom of the map. I ain't gotta have a strap. I still get him with the rap. Hating Dilly, man, you gotta be an idiot. In fact, took the monkey off, then I put the city on my back. Country boy, but I hang around city slickers. Hey everyone, I'm Brooklyn. I'm Mason. I'm Courtney. I'm Samia. And we are The Plug. Plug. And welcome back for another episode. But this episode is special for me for us and for you because it is our one year anniversary. Yeah. You know, it does not feel that long. Not at all. We just started. It does not feel that long. But I know, but since Ignitum is coming up, I'm like, oh, yeah, it, re yeah. it really is coming up. I'm like, oh, this is our second, second Ignitum. And it's just really, ha it just feels like it hasn't been that long with all of us. So plug members, what is your favorite plug memories? See, we're talking about actually shooting it or like... Just as the plug. As, I feel like, I mean, okay, the segment, like my, my, okay, so I'll say my favorite segment. My favorite segment is probably when we filmed favorite Thanksgiving food. Oh, that was Either a, that or the that memories, because I think it was the you same know, day. You didn't get attacked, you got, you got outed. <laughs> No, I got attacked. Got Literally. Nah, you got, uh, attacked. You like collard greens. You, know, bro, you like the Kraft mac and cheese. Come on, we're not finna go over it again. You know, you know what you did. That's it. Just go watch the video and you'll yeah. see what you did. Go watch yeah. it. My favorite has to be like the gingerbread episode. Like that was just so, it was so fun. It was so fun to do until our, okay, okay. Well, it was the experience that counted. It's just cause I'm heavy handed. That's it. That's what happened. You broke the house. I remember okay. you breaking the house. <laughs> I was trying to fix it. it. Listen, I was trying to, I was trying to, I was trying to like put the, the roof back on and it just snapped the head. That's what happened. That's, it, it is what it is. That's how the cookie crumbled, literally. That's it. Bye. Okay, <laughs> no, no, no. You can't, you can't hate me for that one. You can't hate me for that one. Okay, if we're thinking segments, I would have to say the uh, what's in the box challenge. That was, oh, oh I forgot. Yeah, the what's in the box challenge, because we were all, I was like so terrified because at that time I did not pr trust our production crew. I did not. They were, I didn't know what they were about to put in there. I was not, I was not having it. It was really creepy. Not mainly you, maybe you, Jayla. It, it, ooh, I did not <laughs> we trust. love Jayla, but she'd be out to like get her. us sometimes. <laughs> I love you, she, but. She would play too, I, I was scared, I was terrified. It, it was it was a moment I was crying. I said I was crying in half of you. Always yeah. crying. I'm, always, I'm telling you, if we go back to every single episode, you There's will a find tear. a moment that yeah. I, you will. There's either a tear sitting right here, or it's just slowly coming down on the side of her face. Don't start. And she never wipes it. It just stays. Don't Why start. Because I already see your eyes. Look at it. <laughs> it doesn't take much at what all. What is your favorite segment? My favorite segment. I forgot the name, like the, the, but me and Kayla played a game up here. It was the cotton ball game. Oh, that, that was, was part of the episode, funny. right? No, yeah. That was part of the episode? That was, that was part of the episode. Y'all yeah. was, was both cheated. I was not, I didn't cheat at all. I never cheated. I, what I did was I used a side of this, I used a side of this and I scooped it and tossed it. But Caleb, I look back, Caleb was using his hands the whole time. So y'all can't even, y'all can't even fault me for that. No, because I played Caleb. fair. I played fair and I still won fair and square and y'all wouldn't give me my dub. Dude, That's by it. Caleb got us, then you got us, so both y'all got us qualify because you weren't supposed to get up. When was that shit? We said that in the rule. Do you remember that? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Y'all probably was going one throughout the other, but our, I feel if like all of us don't remember, it, it never happened. Just interrupt never me. Why, why don't you just interrupt I me? Didn't. But I feel like our outing, like the plug outing, we we haven't recorded it. We should have. We should have done like a little walk. But our outing, that was pretty cool too. We went to Red Robin. That was. We went to the wrong Red Robin. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me let me let me say the whole story. Okay, so the plan was to go to Rusty Bucket. Yeah. But then they was like, we don't take more than six people. So it's like, mm, okay. So we'll go to Red Robin. They didn't specify which Red Robin it was. So I clicked the n closest one. That, that was a choice. They called me. We're in the one that's like 25 minutes from y'all. 
Bro. So, gas out the window. <laughs> to the one. And no vibe. Ethan, uh, send me a four. It was like us four in the car, and we're like, dude, okay. Yeah. Who was following us? No, because I- Was it- Out there. Kay no, no, Caleb. Caleb, Caleb, Caleb. It was y'all that went to the right one. Yeah. And then Caleb, was following, following us because I was because I had I had uh, I was in the backseat so I had my head out the window. I was like, Hey, Kayla! Hey! <laughs> the, the moment I knew something was wrong, I saw them turning when we came from Rusty Bucket. I saw them making a U-turn and we kept straight. I was like, Okay, somebody going the wrong way. It's either us or them. Yeah. But we're gonna see. We ended up making there. reservations and everything too. We called ahead. No, Cause I literally called ahead. I was like, um, so yeah, can we get this? And then I had to literally call back and was like, yeah, we can cancel that. They were probably we were so mad. We're, so we're like, we got bad. 12 people coming to Red Robin. Like, you guys got to see all of They were getting like prepared. They were like getting the table set, getting together. And I was like, yeah, sorry, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're sorry. I thought that they was gonna get a big gratuity tip and everything. I was like, oh, 12 people? No. no. Nah. The other people gotta go. Yeah. They did. But yes, that was our little one. We'll also be seeing some of your favorite moments from the plug, yeah. which we will be which we'll be seeing in a few minutes. So let's go to that. See you. Sivvy, <laughs> you'd be so proud of me. I got into a fight no more. That's <laughs> <laughs> not who I am. <laughs> Trying to tell you what your priorities should be. That's why having a relationship with the Holy Spirit is imperative because it makes it keeps your self-awareness in the best perspective. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you guys for sending in your favorite moments of the plug. We first off wanna say thank you guys for sticking with us for a year, which is actually crazy. Like, it doesn't even feel like that. My nah. dregs are shaking now, like they used to be like, little baby <laughs> <They used> dregs. <laughs> <laughs> little caterpillars on my head. Like, it's horrible. Like, Ethan too, to Ethan's like growing. <laughs> Ethan used to sit in the corner on the right stool, right just chilling. But now he like, he's way he's, more vocal. He's, he's savage. Exactly. Savage. Cutthroat. Don't even worry about that. Don't worry about that. You'll see them bloopers, maybe. You'll see the bloopers. Maybe. By how he be coming for me, Ronnie, Simmons. Not Never me. M not Courtney, really. Courtney. Courtney needs some more uh, flame. I was about to say, like, why you be going on me? Y'all be coming for me first. <laughs> like, I literally don't be starting nothing. I don't be starting nothing, and then they just come for me and get surprised when I actually go back, <laughs> bruh. I don't then, then, you. Yes, you do. Wait. No. Okay. We're gonna go after the two. Remember, remember the watermelon? No, remember the watermelon and mustard? Remember that? No, remember no, that? No, yeah, no, you remember that. No, you remember that, though. No, because you tried. You <laughs> I felt attacked. I felt attacked. <laughs> betrayed. No, I felt betrayed. Who puts a watermelon and mustard challenge? Because the only it's Man, you didn't even. Yeah, it's a challenge. It's, it's a challenge. Challenge. Because of him. So? He, no, because he wanted to do that. So it's content. It's content. It was yeah. a challenge. It was a challenge. <laughs> that was not content. <laughs> You're alive. You're fine. Barely. I'm struggling to get by. Struggling. <laughs> <laughs> you got it it's so tight, bro. <laughs> you got the bang coming out the side of his lose. neck, bro. <laughs> How do you think I feel? I was don't get him, no. bro. <laughs> you don't want these issues. <laughs> that go to show how much change in a year. <laughs> Ain't it <they> just <laughs> okay? <laughs> I think I was pretty normal during this whole thing. I, I stayed con consistent, very consistent during my whole. Yeah, you went from Mother Nature to actually good content. <laughs> what time is it? What time is it? Cause catch me outside in the parking lot at four o'clock. You about to catch me, bro? I'm gone, bro. I got my ride outside and everything, bro. Catch me at four o'clock. Ate the, I Man. swear on everything I love. She's in so the woods. Old. In the woods. The what? woods? I can't rely on Mother Nature out there. 
Yeah, it's time to rely on Mother Nature. Thank y'all for tuning in, bro. Thank y'all for watching. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Hey guys, it's Brooklyn, and today is YG Sunday. So I'm gonna give you a little into visual of what we do on a regular YG. And today is especially a great day because we have activity day where we do different games, different prizes, everything is just pretty much amazing. So come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing that little sneak peek of YG, but do you know what's better than a sneak peek? Being here. So come on down. YG is always welcome to anyone and everyone at 10 a.m. here at CTAB. And that's pretty much all you have to do. So I'll send it off to the boys with a little special guest of ours. See you. Welcome back, guys. Well, we thought it would be an amazing idea to offer a little bit of different perspective on the show as we talk about the state of the youth. So, I want to welcome Alyssa to our show to give us a little, oh yeah, you might clap, clap, clap around, clap around, uh, to give us just a little bit of our perspective during the pandemic, the things she went through, the things she overcame. I, I'm not even gonna say anymore. Ethan, you got the first question, right? Yeah, I do. Okay, okay. Okay, so the first question is, as a senior, when the pandemic hit, how did that affect you? Um, well, during my senior year, the pandemic was a little, a little bit dialed down a little bit more. It was becoming sort of irregular, so it wasn't as bad as my junior and sophomore year, but my senior year, I definitely grew in my accomplishments because I had done a lot during the pandemic. I had created a club, I had ran for student government, so I had became a lot more involved in my school. So my senior year, it has been a little hectic because I'm sort of, I played volleyball this year. I'm taking two AP courses. Wow. I'm on so many boards that I signed up for. So that has actually, it's been a lot of fun. I'm also in the Midnight Golf Program, which is great because, exactly. It's great because I've met so many of my peers that are the same driven mindset as I am. Yeah. And it's, very, it's, a, it's a great environment for me to be in because sometimes it's kind of hard, especially as an African-American, Wanting to go into the medical field, yes. finding peers that want to do the same thing as me has definitely been one of the highlights of my senior year. So yeah, that's great. That's great. I got a follow-up question real quick. What do you What do you hit? What do you swing? Is that is how you say it for golfing? Like, what do you hit? Um. So there's various there's various clubs for various points in the game. Uh -huh. Have you never played golf? <laughs> no, I ain't never played golf. No. <laughs> I ain't never played golf. I think my favorite is the driver. Oh. It's the one you start with. It's has like a really big head to it. Ethan was showing me like him playing golf this weekend. Yeah. Oh, Ethan, you golf? Yeah. yeah. He's solid. He's solid, bro. He, he, he hits far. He showed me the video. It's just hard to hit the ball for me. Like, <laughs> like way down. Like, you gotta come all the way up, all the way back. That's good. Cool. That's good. Cool. You got this. All right. So like, with high school, with being a senior in the pandemic, like how was starting out? Like the, when the pandemic first started out, how was that? That, honestly, for me, it wasn't as hard for me as others because um, my junior year, the summer before my junior year, since I knew the pandemic was still going on, I decided to take a Harvard course for anatomy and physiology online so it could sort of ease my transition into school. And I also love learning, so it was easier for me. Casually says Harvard. I know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> casually, I'm just, just casually like, says I took a Harvard course like, just, like just so I could ease in. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, oh, so oh, that sure. was that was really fun because I could manage my own time. It definitely it made me focus more on time management uh -huh. because I'm just so busy. So during the summer and summer, I'm like, well, I'm going to do like I'm going to try to study for this, study for that, but then have my downtime. So um, my time management was definitely something that I had to focus on when it came to the pandemic because when you're at home, you're comfortable, you're wrapped up in your blanket, you're like, I can watch Netflix. So I had to say, okay, during these times I'll watch Netflix, during these times I'll study, during these times I go down for lunch, stuff like that. Wow, I could never, I could never set out a time to watch Netflix. I'm not, I'm not too organized like that. Yeah, 
<laughs> no, I graduated, so forget all that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Watch Netflix whenever. Okay. Yeah. All right, my next question is, how has your social life changed due to the pandemic? My social life changed drastically my sophomore year. I sort of lost a lot of my friends, especially going into the pandemic because you have school friends and you have real friends. So I lost a lot of my school friends. I did have one real friend come out, so that was great because then me and her were texting over, um, texting during class. We were like, you wanna FaceTime so we can figure out this equation because I don't understand what's happening. Um, I got closer with my best friend. She lives a little, she lives five minutes from me, but we were FaceTime and texting all the time because she was at home and I was at home. Yeah. So that was really cool. I really found my true friends during the pandemic. Oh, no, <laughs> no. <friends. laughs> well, like, what, what, like, made you, like, try to make such a drive towards, mm -hmm. like, I don't know how to word it, but like, what made, what, like, kind of drives you? Yeah. Well, um. Definitely my family drives me and I have a very supportive family and also just my drive to be great. I want to, when I, of course I want to go to medical school. I want to study microbiology and immunology. I can't so spell I immunology. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a transplant surgeon and my love for travel definitely drove that. And I'm just like, well, if I want to get there, I have to do this, this, and this. I want to start incorporating myself into the environment and also just my drive for making life easier for so many other people. So that definitely drove me to get more involved with activism and diversity and inclusion, which led to me creating my school's first student diversity union club, which was really cool because of course we had Mesa, um, BASE, all those clubs, but there wasn't really a club for everyone. Wow. Where we could learn from each other. So that was really great. We gotta <laughs> pause you. and clap for that. Like drop a bomb for that. Yeah, you know I'm saying that's fire. That's fire. That's really fire. What'd you say the name of that was again? Student diversity union. Student diversity union. Yes. Okay, that's what's up. Especially when um, I guess the soaring of the involvement with Black Lives Matter that yes. definitely drove it because I felt like in so many schools there was a lot of separation and people were just like, "Well, I'm gonna hang out with my people. You hang out with your people. There's no." inclusion there's no i guess talking to one another so i wanted to create that environment where students could interact and build that bridge for communication which was slowly breaking and cracking yeah, yeah like the people were definitely like things were kind of like tense, tense. super tense. tense and everybody was like keeping to their own little groups yes so like that's that's really cool to like trying to make everybody come together and because because like nothing's gonna get solved if everybody stay separated you know, end up like you know everybody got to talk stuff out everybody has to talk something i think this is like this has been one of the most times of separation that i've ever seen Man. like pandemic and then the whole like the movement got pushed for it like that was yeah it's a lot it's, it's like a lot to have him like yeah because people are already isolated yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah everybody isolated and then the whole thing happens and people are split off into their own little like different subgroups and everything and like they're already isolated so people can't really say nothing about it no, so true. nobody's there to check people nobody's there to like conversate or anything like that people are left to their own devices so that's but then you got Alyssa who creates <laughs> who creates the club where you can we all can be one and learn together you is should like, start that is it like a my brother's keeper type deal um a little bit there's so I guess with the my brother's keeper we have a club called link crew at my school which I'm also a commissioner for so <laughs> when it comes to commission link crew is in <laughs> I really am I'm, I'm involved in so many things but link crew is an international club so a lot almost so many schools in America have it all around the world really it's a club for freshman integration so it's just um, incoming freshmen you have a upperclassman mentor and a commissioner works with transfer students as well because it's definitely hard coming from, we have transfer students that moved in from, we have a transfer student from Japan. Wow. There's various transfer students, they're moving states, just moving schools, and especially in the middle of pandemic, it's especially hard. It was hard for me to come back to school. So that's a little bit of our My Brother's Keeper, which I think is really good. I try to integrate that into my club as well, sort of introducing them in, I'm yeah. like, Get involved, guys, like you're the new wave. I'm leaving in a year, so it's up to you guys. <laughs> that's right, that's right, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, How did you overcome adversity while trying to accomplish like social change? So that is a little hard. Um, that was hard, I guess. My adversity was sort of just myself in a way because I can be very 
well, what if this happens? I say I'm strategic. Yeah. What if, I'm like, what if this happens? What if this happens? Well, if this happens, then such as if my club got denied, I was like, okay, I could go for a position in base or I could go for a position in Mesa, sort of try to include that diversity in various other clubs. So um, for me, my adversity was sort of myself mm. and myself sort of being afraid of what I could do and how it would change the culture. Yes, Yeah. definitely. We can like be our biggest critics you know, especially with like our passions and things that we love. Cause it's kind of like we're the first person to like run it by ourselves. Exactly. And then before you even like tell other people, we're like trying to think of things they'll say like that contradict us or like things that they agree with, stuff like that. Agreed, agreed. But like when you push through, you create gold like, like yeah. that. Like you create that, you create, you know, communication and open dialogue and you write like, we're there is a new wave coming in, but I want you to know that you are a wave. You know what I'm saying? And you've like come through a wave and done a lot of stuff. So it's it's an amazing, it's an amazing, amazing, amazing time. But I think that's one of our questions, right? Yeah. That was one of our questions. First off, again, thank you for coming. Thank we you for really me. as as yes, we gotta have you again. You gotta come to a segment or something. Okay. Like that. Most that for sure. Alright, well that was our segment about our new perspective here with Alyssa. We thank her so much for coming on to the show. And we hope that you're loving this content because it's about to get better. So keep watching and we'll be right back after this. Hey guys, first off, we're back in service. YG is open. I don't know why y'all not here, but we be playing games, activities, getting prizes, all of that. So make sure y'all come next Sunday, please. And thank you. Also, Ignita is coming out again in this summer. We don't have a date yet, but it is coming out. So y'all be ready for that and follow all of our social media platforms for more info. So, back to the show. Okay guys, we have a special guest in the building. The medical executive of Michigan is here and she is responsible for making like all the decisions throughout the pandemic and keeping us safe. And we have a few questions for her. Happily. So, my first question is, what affected your children the most during the pandemic? Well, I have a seven-year-old son and we actually moved from Dubai back here to Michigan during the pandemic. So in July of 2020, we moved um, from overseas, took an 18-hour flight with all of our masks and PPE gear on and moved back to Michigan, which is an area that he doesn't really remember. He's never really lived here before the pandemic. And so it was for him starting um, school virtually, so starting in a new school where he knew no one virtually and then having to make friends with this virtual school situation, um, living in a new neighborhood, not knowing anyone, losing those connections. Yeah. Um, so I think it's been hard for all kids right now having to do things like virtual school um, and having to have this different kind of lifestyle. But I think especially for someone who's moved to a new area, um, it's a yeah. big adjustment. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Um, my question is, how did you help them get through? Well, how did you help him get through that? Or like, what, how are you like just cushioning him throughout this? Um, we have tried to do a lot of, you know, one-on-one -on -one play dates with, um, you know, my friends, kids who I know are vaccinated and yeah. doing things outdoors. Um, he still likes to wear his mask most of the time just because this is, you know, he doesn't really remember a whole lot before the pandemic. This is life mm -hmm. to him. Um, and so just trying to do whatever makes him feel comfortable. Okay, my question is, how has your role changed during COVID? Well, before COVID, I was actually living overseas and working in a hospital. And then I moved back here to Michigan during the pandemic and started working at the Department of Health. Um, and so really everything that I have done since I moved back to Michigan has been all COVID all the time. Mm -hmm. um, very different than working in a hospital system. But this is important work. You know, we have to make sure that our communities are safe, that our friends and families are safe. Um, I, I'm not sure about you all, but you know, people have lost loved ones. Kids have been orphaned during this pandemic. People have lost jobs. It's just been a really tough two years. So I'm really honored to have this role here to serve the people of Michigan. It's very weird too, it's only been two years. It feels like way longer than that. Well, there's COVID time, right? So COVID time, you don't know if it's 10 years or two years or what. Yeah. Especially being like stuck in the house. Yeah. I know for me it was like really stressful, especially with friendships and relationships. It was like, I'm not used to being like not with you face to face. It was really stressful. So 
Um, my second question, are there any steps we can take to maintain safe protocols as things are opening up? Yes. So one of the things that we are struggling with in Michigan is our vaccination rates are behind other states. So we are behind all of the states that surround us um, and we are really behind the national averages and where we're most struggling is in younger age groups. Mm -hmm. So if we look at our vaccination rates in, in older adults over the age of 65, we, we look like we're doing fine. Mm -hmm. But with each decade, people are not getting vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And it gets lower and lower and lower until our five to 11 year olds, the ones who just became eligible for those vaccinations a yeah. few months ago, they have the lowest vaccination rates of all. Mm -hmm. So that's a problem. But what is an even bigger problem is that that disparity, that difference, it's bigger for African-American communities than it is for white communities. And so what that means is there are whole communities that are getting left behind with vaccination. Mm -hmm. And so the biggest thing that I think young people can do right now to protect themselves is to make sure that you're vaccinated and if you're eligible for a booster, get boosted and then talk to people. So TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, whatever your social media preferences are, get out there and tell people why you chose to get vaccinated. Um, tell people what your decision making was. Were you nervous? Why were you nervous? How did you overcome that? Because we're in a stage now where if we are not looking out for our peers and our communities, again, there are communities that are getting left behind. Yeah. And that is gonna be a problem in the fall. So when we look forward and when we look at how this pandemic is gonna go, we're in a relatively okay time right now. Yeah. You know, it's summertime, rates are lowish. Um, you know, we can be outside, yeah. but we are expecting cases to go up a little bit with this new subvariant, the BA2 subvariant. Yeah. And we're expecting future surges. So probably around fall, there's gonna be an increase in cases. And probably in the winter, there's gonna be an increase in cases. So protect yourselves now, get vaccinated. Talk to your friends, talk to your loved ones, talk to your parents. Sometimes it's the kids who have to convince the parents to get vaccinated. Um, you guys are the future. You have a lot of power in your hands and uh, we're counting on you. How do you believe a positive mentality and being aware of your mental health can be a maintenance, maintenance in this pandemic? Well, like I said, I think this pandemic has been really hard for people on a number of levels. You know, there are people who have lost loved ones and there are people who have been socially isolated and it's, it's been really difficult. Um, so I think asking for help when you're going through something like that, when you're feeling socially isolated or lonely, ask for help, reach out to people who can support you. Um, and even if there are activities and things that have been disrupted by the pandemic, find other ways of making those social connections. It's just so important to be with people who care about you and people who have a similar outlook. Um, so those are my suggestions, but I know these last two years have not been easy. Yeah, been the kindest. But um, I know, especially in this age, in this era, since we have technology, laptops, computers, phones, I feel like it was way easier than if we were back. Yeah, to still like see people, but at the same time, uh, kids, we weren't used to like going online, Zoom, Meet, mm -hmm. like Google Meet, because especially when it comes to school, I know it was hard, especially like on my class, my classmates, most of our scores were like going down because we didn't know how to understand, we didn't know how to do it. So an additional question, how, what would you like to say like to the kids who are scared? Because I know on the news it makes it seem like the vaccine is oh so bad, like it's not really helping, like it's not going to help you. What would you say to those kids who are kind of scared of the vaccine? Um, number one, I would never recommend anything that I didn't feel comfortable with myself. Mm -hmm. So I am vaccinated and boosted and my seven year old son is vaccinated. Um, so I would never recommend to you all and to other kids something that I didn't feel comfortable having my own kid have. Um, so these vaccines, 
you know, when we talk about silver linings from the pandemic, you talked about technology and like how Zoom is advanced and how we all are a little bit more tech savvy because of the pandemic. The other silver lining that I really see are these vaccines and the technology behind them. They are amazing. Um, we now have the capability to make these really effective vaccines in record time. Um, they're, they're amazing technology and they're very, very safe. We've never studied vaccines as much as we've studied these ones. Now, what happened when we started getting all these new variants is the vaccine stopped protecting as well against infection. So can you get infection if you're vaccinated? You can. But what it's stopping is it is preventing people from dying. It's preventing people from going to the hospital, from ending up in the ICU and on a ventilator. And that's what we want to do. So, um, you know, I, I understand that there's a lot of talk. There's a lot of noise out there. Yeah. But I'm an infectious disease doctor. I've been vaccinated myself. Everyone in my family is vaccinated. I trust this vaccine. Um, don't be nervous. Yeah. I know you answered my question. Mine was how important is it for students to be vaccinated as things are getting normal? But that was already answered, so we're totally fine with that. But thank you so much for coming on. This was a lot of good and very, very, very important information to be taken in. So, thank you for having me. Um, well, at first, I thought it was like kind of like a fun thing because I already had senioritis and I didn't want to go to class. So, when they told us, like, oh, we're going to be doing the rest online, by that time, I only had a few weeks left, so I was really happy. Um, and also we're supposed to go to South Africa for like a trip from our school and that kind of got canceled too. And once it started, like the shutdown actually started, that's when I was like, oh, like we're not going to be able to do anything. Like our graduation, our prom, our last like moments together. Um, I would say it's like bittersweet. Like we didn't really get those times like with our friends that we'll say goodbye to and everything. but. It was okay because some of those people I really didn't want to see anyway, so bittersweet in a way. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that's a hard question. Um, only because I don't think I really persevered like through the pandemic. I feel like it affected me and like a lot of people my age um, tremendously. I would say you try your best to like pick yourself up and I do a lot of like self-care things to try to like keep myself motivated but I don't know if we're at the point where I actually persevered yet to be honest. Okay guys welcome back and now it's time for our takeaways. So my takeaway is you have to be organized and know what you're really doing and put yourself out there if you want to have like a good future set for yourself and you got to really strategize on how to put yourself out there, like I said, and, uh, you know, kind of just, like, uh, make sure that you're on the right path, on the right track, and, yeah, okay, so my scripture is John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So that kind of means, like, to me, like, God has over, already overcome all the troubles in this world. So he's like a very good asset if you need anything to just uh, go through him and yeah, just pray through him and everything. Good scripture, that was nice. Okay. I kind of got uh, taking, I took away like um, believing in yourself first. Like she said um, that first she was kind of scared to go up, go off and make the clubs and do everything that she wanted to do. And like for a lot of people, just taking the first step and thinking that you can do something and that you can make a change and impact is kind of the hardest thing to do. Cause you're, you're always thinking about outside opinions. You think about like what people would think, how hard it'd be to do it. So if you kind of have like faith in yourself and faith in God, you can do it. Yeah. So my, my scripture is Luke 17, 6, and it says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. And I kind of take that, like, first you got to believe that you can do it, and then, like, things will just follow after. 
What's so funny? <laughs> Nothing. I'm smiling. Just smiling, nodding? Yep. Yeah. My takeaways were just basically like, there's a lot of things that are important out there and also not to take things for granted. So like when you get a chance to hang out with your friends, hang out with your friends because like for quarantine, it was kind of like that and then we didn't get to hang out with our friends. So I feel like you, you, you have <laughs> friends, stop it. You got three friends up here at least. Exactly. I don't think she counts you. We was during Anyways, the pandemic. during the pandemic and just, well, even now, just don't take things for granted. That's basically what I took out of it. And my scripture is Philippians 4, 13. It's already up here, like some people. <clears throat> I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And that is an wow. OG by, Bible like, verse that everybody knows. I was not talking to one and two. Oh. All right, so let three come in. <laughs> yeah. Nah, nah. See, everybody do know that. Brooklyn speak effects. But hey, we just gonna leave it alone. Oh. We're gonna leave it be. So three didn't come in. Three did come in. Brooklyn, what are your takeaways? My takeaways from both like a mixture of our medical executive and Alyssa is that go out for what you want and don't let anything stop you. Don't let fears or anything like that stop you because when it comes to the vaccines, fear is a big part of that because you don't know what's gonna happen, what's what's going into your body and you just have to have faith. That was the main thing because I got I got a vac fully vaccinated last year and I literally just got my booster today. So I had to have faith because at first I was like, everyone's saying how bad these vaccines are, how it's just gonna mess up your body. Even my granny was like, no, those, those things aren't good for you. I was like, well, if God say so, I'm, I'm gonna live for another day. If so basically not, don't let fear overcome you. There you go. I was gonna say it, but she just kept talking. So I let her finish. Cause you always go ahead and then someone already. Brooklyn speak her. your facts. You she always speak facts, but it's a she's, smaller she's definition speaking to facts. it. She's speaking you know? facts. But it was everything, good everything was like, good. See, she ain't even. She ain't even. No she ain't even said say, it was bad. She ain't even say like nothing off. Like she said, she said everything facts. Okay, my uh, scripture is First Peter three fourteen. But if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. So for me, that just means. Even if you're suffering mentally, physically, it's it's even for God, because I, righteousness, I feel that's God or Jesus, both of them to me in the same thing. I feel like you're just suffering just for good to happen. It's gonna be it's gonna be obstacles, it's gonna be challenges, but it's gonna be light. I know everyone says like in a dark tunnel there's light at the end, but it is. It's going to be. It might be a long tunnel. It might be a really long tunnel. <laughs> But you're gonna get there. So that's just what it means to me. So I feel like, I feel like we had a good- I feel like we got a lot of info. Like we had two important guests like come um, and they very. dropped a lot of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like we had a very informational episode. Did you guys like, you guys enjoy talking to um, our medical person? Yeah, of course. Yeah, she was very cool. She was very we cool. We were over there, me and Aether were over there listening and we, like I was laughing a little bit because she said some funny stuff, but I was coughing too. I was like, <laughs> I didn't want her to hear because she was going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that was the end of our episode. Make sure you comment down below what things that you've overcome during this pandemic and what things that you're going to be doing after this pandemic is over because God won't let, God won't let us trouble for so long. Mm -hmm. he, he, he won't let us do that. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and go watch our other videos. Another one just dropped, I'm sure. So come on. Get the vaccine too. Don't be tripping. You heard it from, you heard it here at the plug. Okay, bye. You heard it here at the plug. Like, bye, bye. We're done. Okay. Like, we had to. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and I put the city on my back. Country boy, but I hang around city slickers.